Hi, I'm Dr. Dean Ornish, and I'm delighted to join you here today at the Aspen Brain Lab Conference. I'm so sorry that I can't be with you in person, but at this moment I'm on a plane returning from London. And I appreciate so much the kind invitation from Glenda Greenwald to participate virtually in this way, as well as her vision in setting up this extraordinary conference. You know, for the last 42 years, I've directed a series of randomized trials and demonstration projects showing that simple lifestyle changes, what we eat, which is a whole foods plant-based diet, naturally low in both fat and sugar, moderate exercise, various stress management techniques, including meditation and yoga, and psychosocial support, or to put it even more, more simply, to eat well, move more, stress less, and love more, that these same lifestyle changes can reverse the progression of a wide variety of chronic diseases. We were, the, we, we were able to show for the first time that even severe heart disease could be reversed by making these lifestyle changes in a series of randomized trials. These studies have been published in the leading peer-reviewed journals like the Journal of the American Medical Association, the Lancet, the uh, New England Journal of Medicine, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, and others. We found that these same lifestyle changes could also reverse high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, obesity, type 2 diabetes. We published a study, the first randomized trial, showing that these same lifestyle changes can slow, stop, and even reverse the progression of early stage prostate cancer. What's true for prostate cancer will likely be true for, for breast cancer as well. We published a study with uh, J. Craig Venter, who was the first to decode the human genome, that these same lifestyle changes, when you change your lifestyle, it changes your genes, over 500 genes in just three months, turning on the genes that keep us healthy, down-regulating the genes that cause us to get sick. We published a study with Dr. Elizabeth Blackburn, who was awarded the Nobel Prize for her pioneering work with telomeres, showing for the first time that these same lifestyle changes can lengthen telomeres and increase telomerase. Telomeres are the ends of our chromosomes that regulate aging. As we get older, our telomeres get shorter, and as our telomeres get shorter, our lives get shorter and the risk of premature death from pretty much all diseases, including Alzheimer's disease, goes up proportionate. We found that we could actually increase the telomerase by 30% in just three months. And over a five-year period, we found that we could actually lengthen telomeres. And when we published this in The Lancet, the editors called it reversing aging at a cellular level. And so the more diseases we study and the more underlying biological mechanisms we look at, the more reasons we have to show why these simple changes are so powerful and how quickly people can get better. My wife, Anne, and I, who we've worked together for over 20 years, published a new book called Undo It. And it presents a radical unifying theory, which is that, you know, I was trained, like all doctors, to view heart disease and diabetes and Alzheimer's disease and prostate cancer as fundamentally different, with different diagnoses, different treatments. And yet I've come to realize that they're really the same disease manifesting and masquerading in different forms. Because in all of these studies, we found it was the same diet and lifestyle intervention, eat well, move more, stress less, and love more, that could reverse the progression of all of these. And so since Alzheimer's contains the same, is caused by the same mechanisms, chronic inflammation, oxidative stress, changes in telomeres and gene expression, in the microbiome, in apoptosis and angiogenesis, and so on, that cause all these other chronic diseases, I believe that we're at a place with Alzheimer's very similar to where we were 40 years ago when we first showed that heart disease was reversible. In other words, the epidemiological data, the data from less intensive interventions like the finger study, for example, have shown that less intensive interventions may slow the rate of progression and maybe even stop the rate of progression of early stage Alzheimer's disease. Very much like less intensive interventions 40 years ago could slow the rate of progression of coronary heart disease. I believe, at least, our hypothesis is that a more intensive intervention may actually reverse it. And as you know, there are no good, there are no effective, highly effective drugs for treating or for preventing Alzheimer's. So if we can actually show we can reverse the progression, then that will, first of all, give millions of people new hope and new choices, but will also have implications for, for prevention as well and early detection. And a lot of people don't want to know if they're at risk for Alzheimer's because they think there's nothing they can do about it. Uh, James Watson, who famously uh, decoded the, the uh, structure of DNA, was one of the first people to have his genome sequence. And he said, I want to know everything except the APOE4 gene, which is linked to Alzheimer's, because why would I want to know if I'm at high risk for something that I can't do anything about? And so both from a prevention standpoint as well as a therapeutic standpoint, if we can show in this randomized trial that we can reverse it, uh, that'll be really thrilling. 
And so we're in the midst of the study now. We're taking 100 men and women who have early to moderate Alzheimer's disease, and we're randomizing them into two groups. We're doing the study in collaboration with uh, Dr. Bruce Miller and Joel Kramer, who run the Memory and Aging Center at UCSF, Dr. Catherine Madison at California Pacific Medical Center. They're doing the cognitive function testing, as well as changes in hippocampal volume to look at uh, whether we're having an effect on that. We're working with Dr. David Sinclair at Harvard, who has the Sinclair Lab that's doing the gene expression and the proteomic studies. We're working with Dr. Elizabeth Blackbird again, doing the uh, telomere studies, and with Dr. Rob Knight at UCSD, who's doing the microbiome studies, and Steve Horvath at UCLA, who's doing something called the DNA clock, a measure of aging. So we'll have a, not only looking at the primary endpoint, which is where co whether or not cognitive function improves, but also, if it's so, why and to whether there's any correlation between the degree of change in lifestyle and the degree of cognitive improvement, if any, that we measure. So I'm more excited about this study than anything I've done in a long time. These 100 men and women will be randomized to two groups. They'll both be tested with all these tests at baseline. One group, the experimental group, will get this intensive intervention for um, three months, excuse me, for four months. Uh, and it's the same intervention that we're using in our study, that met in our demonstration projects, and that Medicare is now reimbursing in hospitals and clinics around the country for people with heart disease. It's an hour of supervised exercise, an hour of meditation and yoga, an hour of a support group, and an hour of a group meal with a lecture. And on the Medicare, we do that twice a week. On the Alzheimer's study, we're doing that three times a week for uh, four months, and then we'll repeat the testing in both groups. Then the control group, who wasn't getting the intervention, will cross over. They'll receive it now for four months. The experimental group will get it for four additional months, for a total of eight months, and then we'll test them a third time. And I'm really, as I say, hoping that we can show this, but whatever we show, it'll be important because if we show that we can actually reverse the progression, as I mentioned, that will give millions of people around the world new hope and new choices. And I have a personal interest in this because my mother and many of her siblings died of Alzheimer's disease. But even if we show that it doesn't work, that'll be important for people to know as well. And so, uh, Luis Ayoyos is doing a documentary where he's filming these patients all the way through. He got an Academy Award for his first film uh, called The Cove. Uh, Racing Extinction was seen by over 4 billion people. And uh, we can capture things in a film that we can't show in a simple, in a, in a journal article. And, uh, and the process of what people going, are going through is to me so much more interesting than just hearing them talk about it in retrospect. And so if you're interested in the study and supporting it, if you're interested in the film and supporting it, it'll be a way of leveraging your resources to hopefully uh, shine a light in the darkness and to help us empower people with information that whatever we show will be critically important. So thank you for this opportunity for me to be here today. Um, and most of all, Glenda, thank you for this opportunity as well. Thank you.